Hello guys. In this video, we will start to understand what decision trees are. Uh, we will probably cover entire decision tree in two or three parts so that you will have the complete understanding part by part. Okay. So let's start. So what are decision trees? Decision trees are a class of supervised machine learning algorithms which are non-parametric in nature. Okay. So when I say non-parametric, they are very intuitive and within the given data set, they will try to learn the data patterns and arrive at some conclusions. Okay. So as you have seen in my linear regression, logistic regression video, all those algorithms have some parameters to learn and with the help of optimization algorithm, we update those parameters in order to reduce the loss. But here decision trees, uh, which are under non-parametric class of machine learning algorithms, there are no parameters to learn as such. Whatever we have are called as hyperparameters, wherein we have to tune them in order to have the effective decision making system in place. Okay. So let's take a simple example. Let me copy, a, copy an example here. So how in order to explain how a decision tree works in simple terms. Okay. So I have this particular data here. So I'm not sure if you're able to see it clearly. It's kind of blurred here, but I'll explain it anyway. Okay. So I have three columns height, weight, and the third column obese. Okay. So basically, right now we are dealing with a classification problem here. We have to classify whether a given person is obese or not based on his or her height and weight combination. So here we have two features, height and weight. Obese is our target class. It has two values, either yes or no. Okay. So what decision tree can do here? So let's see, based on the height, can we decide? So let's just check the data. Okay. So we have heights varying from 6.8 all the way down to 5, 5 feet, right? So let's see, we have a height here. We have recorded height here. And we can split this data set into two parts, right? Uh, which is greater than 6 feet, greater than or equal to 6 feet and less than 6 feet, less than 6, greater than or equal to 6. So how many data points do we get? So if we have greater than or equal to 6, how many we have? 1, 2, 3, 3 data points and those 3 data points, are they obese or the mix of obese and non-obese? I think all these 3 data points are non-obese. So we have 3 data points which are not obese, no, no, no. Okay, so we have these three data points. Now, when it comes to less than six feet height, so how many data points we have? One, two, and three data points. So three data points we have which have the height less than six feet. So out of those three data points, what are the number of obese and non-obese? So we have one obese, one not obese, and two obese. So total two obese and one not obese, right? So, how can we split these data points which are having the height less than 6 feet? So, we can make use of this particular weight here, right? So, weight, if weight is, now let us see what would be the condition, right? We have 95, we have 60 and we have 90, right? So, when the weight is 60, if the height is less than 6 feet, it is not obvious. If the weight is greater than 60, when the height is less than 6 feet, they are obese, right? So we can split the data into two parts again based on the weight, right? So it's less, uh, less than or equal to 60, less than or equal to 60 and greater than 60. So if we have the weight greater than 60 for the heights less than 6 feet, we will classify them as obese and if we have the weights less than 60 for the height less than 6 feet we will classify them as non-obese and for that we have one data point here no right this one is here no and these two here are yes so i'll have another yes here right so this is how a decision tree basically works guys okay so if you guys can correlate it, it will it can be implemented with simple if else structure, right? Programmatically, you can think of this as a 
simple if else structure so that's what decision tree actually is okay now we will understand the geometric intuition behind this okay so what i'll do i'll just plot this so i have height weight correct so let me plot the graph so i have my height here on x axis and weight here on my y axis right so let me just plot it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So all heights in feet. Okay. 7 feet, 6 feet, 5 feet. And weight, let me say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90 and above okay so we will have this setup now we will just mark the points based on this particular data that we have here so first is 6 feet weight is 90 so 6 feet weight is 90 so it will come here okay so this is our first data point next similarly 5.595 so 5.595 will be more than this particular on top of this particular data point because the weight is greater by 5 kilos okay so this is our second point now 6.5 height weight is 90 6.5 comes somewhere here and weight is 90 again so it will be parallel to the first point now we have covered first three the fourth one 5 feet height 60 kilograms weight so 5 feet height and 60 kilograms weight the point comes here right 6.8 100 nearly 7 and 100 will be way here okay 100 5.6 90 so somewhere here and it will be 90 right so this this is how the plot looks like when we plot this data into a two dimensional graph so this is our data points now based on these values we are classifying whether that person is obese or not correct so first thing so, what this decision tree does, it splits this data at the feature called as height. So, if it is greater than or equal to 6, they are not obese. If they are less than 6, then we have to decide further. So, what we will do, we will first draw this on this particular graph, greater than or equal to 6. So, it comes here, right? So, height is on x axis, we will draw a line parallel to our y axis which will be passing through value 6 on x axis right so now what we can do for height greater than 6 we will classify them as non obese right data points lying beyond this particular line are not obese right what about the data points lying behind this line we have to decide it further based on the weight and we are splitting this based on the weight, based on the criteria less than or equal to 60 and greater than 60. So, 60 lies on, the weight lies on y axis. So, what we will do, we will draw a line parallel to y axis passing through 60 kilo on x axis. Right. So, now what we have done, we have split the 2D graph into multiple sections. Based on this, now if you check this flow, height greater than or equal to 60, height greater than or equal to 6 feet, these are all not obese points, okay. So, these are all not obese. Now, data points which are less than 6 feet in height. So, these three we have to consider, right. And based on the weight criteria, we will decide whether these data points are obese or not, okay. So, based on this, Less than or equal to 60, this is one point which is equal to 60, this is not obese. So, this data point actually lies on this particular line which is splitting the y axis, right? And the data points which are lying above this splitting boundary on the y axis, these two will be classified as obese because this is the condition we used to split the data. Greater than 60 weight less than 6 feet in height, they are our obese data points. You can see that in this particular data set as well.
okay so this is how basically decision tree works so what i have explained you it's a geometric intuition geometric intuition so here we had just two features or two columns height and weight based on which we were able to decide whether that particular person is obese or not but just think in multi feature data set wherein we have more than two or three more than three features so how this graph would look like it would be a multi dimensional graph and these decision lines right we can call them as decision lines these things will be a plane or in fact they will be hyper plane right dividing the coordinate system into hyper cuboids okay don't get overwhelmed with, me, with it these are just the terminologies you don't have to remember them in order to understand it but in order to have a geometric intuition it's better to understand with some example and how if we imagine in a multi dimensional space what are the terminologies we can use so in a multi dimensional plane the hyper plane will be dividing the coordinate systems into our hyper cuboids so let me help you to im imagine this in an easy way so imagine you are sitting in a room okay and the data points that we have are floating in that particular room above the ground level okay so now imagine this particular lines dividing your entire room into separate cuboids right and each cuboid will represent one class of data whether obese or not obese based on different criteria right based on height based on weight okay so in this case there are only two criteria based on height and weight but in real life example it can be more than two features okay so this is what decision tree is all about theoretically speaking okay so now if you ask me about the pseudo code okay so before going to pseudo code we have to understand some terminologies okay so let me write the terminologies so what are the terminologies that we will use okay so from this particular data set while, while i was explaining i chose height as my first feature to split the given data set right so that particular node we call that as a node and the particular node which we chose at the first step to split the data is called as root node root node okay and how do we decide which feature to select as a root node uh, it's a topic for our next part in the video right so we will talk about that in detail with in detail math involved in it how do we choose root nodes okay so that's our root node next after we select the root node we go with the flow and then if we are not able to make any decision in a easy way we will again choose some feature where where we will divide the data set further right so in this case for the height less than 6 feet we choose weight as another feature where we decided to split split the data set again so these things are called as decision nodes decision nodes right so let me just write it here we have root node we got to know what is root node and we will have decision node which will help us to decide based on which feature we will split the data further okay and how do we choose which feature to be used at the, as a decision node it's again a topic for discussion in my second part of this video okay then what we will do we will repeat we will split this uh, data again and again based on some net decision node recursively recursively and how long we will do that it again depends on certain criteria so it can depend on the depth of the tree okay depth of this tree so in this case the depth is 1 2 right so we can ask the tree to stop the recursion at the depth of 3 5 10 based on the data set that we have at our hand okay and there are some other criteria is called as minimum members minimum members in each node in each node so when i say this if we split based on weight so if we have two or three data points in each of the split 
we can decide the decide to stop the recursion based on the number of data points that we have in each leaf nodes or non leaf nodes right and when i say leaf and non leaf nodes this particular thing decision node is also called as non leaf node okay and these particular things at the end these are our leaf nodes when i say leaf nodes these could be pure nodes when i say pure only one class of data belongs to that particular subtree uh, or that particular node okay so that we call it as leaf node so what are the terminologies root node decision node leaf node okay and one more thing this entire structure is called as tree okay and this sub sub structure here right so this will be called as you can call it as a branch or sub tree okay so these are all some of the terminologies involved which are important in order to understand decision tree algorithm okay so mathematically speaking i have shown you the geometric intuition okay how the hyperplane divides the coordinate system into hyper cuboids okay and programmatically speaking we can think decision tree as a uh, complex structure of nested if else okay so it's nothing but if else conditions right based on some condition on some column we go on splitting the data that we have at our hand and that condition on what feature to apply is based on certain criteria called as genie impurity gene impurity or we can also use something called as information gain in order to assess this there is something known as entropy okay so all these technical terms we will have in depth understanding in my second part of the decision tree video okay so this decision tree can be applied to both categorical categorical and numerical data and one question to ask is how to decide the split when we are dealing with numerical data okay so we will address that in my next part of the video okay so these are the important things and introduction to decision tree theoretically hope this is helpful for you guys to understand the next part of this wherein i will be covering the entire math involved in case of decision trees okay so that's it for this video guys hope you learned something new if you like my video give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye